foundations really matter. Uh, you know, whether you're new to Christ or whether you've been a Christian for many years, if you've moved away from your foundation, if your foundation has been eroded, been chipped away at, and trust me, uh, the enemy of your soul, Satan, will try to erode the foundations because he knows if he can destroy the foundation, it doesn't matter how well built or how much money was spent on the first or the second floor or all the amenities, the whole building will collapse without a proper foundation. And so far, we've looked at the word of God, right? The importance of the Bible in our lives on a daily basis. I can't encourage you enough. Read your Bible and pray every single day. You'll be blessed. You'll be blessed. Then we looked at the foundation of understanding what salvation is. What's salvation? You know, is there salvation apart from Christ? Right? We talked about this. If, if there's another way to heaven, then Jesus Christ died on the cross for no reason. And Jesus said he was the only way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. We've looked at the foundation of sin. What is sin? How does it affect our lives, right? How are we to apply these things and walk it in? Today, we're going to begin a study uh, this week on the Holy Spirit. We looked at the deity of Christ last week, that Jesus is God. But now we're going to see as well the Holy Spirit is God and who the Holy Spirit is and what part he plays in our lives. And we're going to talk about that this, this week. But today, we're going to talk about the idea of who is the Holy Spirit, right? Who is the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit just a force? Is it like Star Wars, may the force be with you? Is that who the Holy Spirit is? Or does the Bible tell us that the Holy Spirit is a person, the Holy Spirit is God, and the Holy Spirit is someone we need to believe in and walk with and walk in? A bunch of verses today, Acts chapter 5, verse 3 through 4. Listen to this. But Peter said, Ananias... Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? Here we see with Ananias and Sapphira in the first church that they lie to the Holy Spirit. First thing you need to note, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is a person. Uh, a force cannot be lied to. I cannot lie to this coffee cup. I can't say, you know, I'm going to fill you with coffee today and then actually fill it with green tea, right? You can't lie to an object. You, you can only lie to a person. And Peter here says to Ananias, why, is this, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is a person that you and I can know, can honor, can worship, can walk with, just like Jesus Listen to this verse, Psalm 139, verse 7 through 8. This is David says, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I free, flee from your presence? If I assign to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol or hell, you are there. See, the Holy Spirit is not just a person. The Holy Spirit is God. You see, here in Psalm 139, we see the Holy Spirit's omnipresence. We see that the Holy Spirit is everywhere. The Holy Spirit is God. Only God is three things. Omniscient, which is all-knowing. Um, omnipotent, which is all-powerful. And omnipresent, which is everywhere. Only God is. You know, part of the internet is Satan's attempt to be like God, to be omnipresent, to be everywhere. Now he can, through the device in our pockets all around the world, kind of, Pretend, well, I'm just like God, but he's not. God is actually omnipresent. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is also God. Now listen, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10, Paul says, These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, watch this, for the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, searches everything, even the depths of God. Listen, the Holy Spirit thinks and knows things. The Holy Spirit thinks and knows things. And the reason why is because he's a person. He is God. The Holy Spirit is the one that, as Paul says here, searches everything, even the depths of God. Even the depths of God. And the reason being is because the Holy Spirit is a person and he is God. It's very important we nail this down so that we can build our relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. Watch this, Ephesians 4, verse 30. Paul says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, 
by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Don't grieve, note this, the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is God. And the Holy Spirit can be grieved. Once again, objects, forces cannot be grieved, right? The, we, we could do something to the electricity in the building. We could make a mistake and the electricity could go off or, or we could, you know, cause a spark or a fire. But, but we can't grieve the electricity. Some people have said the Holy Spirit is like the wind because you can see it. You can't see it, but you can feel it. And it's kind of true, a, a decent illustration, but you can't grieve the wind. You can't grieve electricity. You can grieve a person. You can grieve, grieve God by quenching him, by resisting him, by walking in sin, by not, by not being attentive to him, right? The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is God. Romans 8, 26 through 27. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Holy Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Holy Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Listen, the Holy Spirit is a person, the Holy Spirit is God, and the Holy Spirit is praying for us. He is interceding for us. The Holy Spirit is talking to the Father saying, be patient with Bill. He means well. He just stumbles sometimes. Be patient, Father. Let's forgive him. Let's encourage him. The Holy Spirit is praying for you today. And there's so many great verses. Maybe later on, read John 14, verse 16 through the end of the chapter. The Holy Spirit is our comforter, Jesus says. So today, we learned the foundation. The Holy Spirit is a person, and the Holy Spirit is God. He's one we can grieve. He's one we can know. He's one we can walk with. He's one who comforts us. He's one who prays for us. And tomorrow we'll talk more about how to walk in the Spirit, how to, how to receive the Spirit. And we'll talk about what happens when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. So, Father, I pray even today, may your people walk with and know you, Holy Spirit. May we respect you more than we do. And, Lord, may your word be what defines for us the, the, the understanding of who you are, Holy Spirit. And may we grow in our relationship with you, we pray, this week on through eternity. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.